The Buddhist doctrine of the two truths Wiley, BDEN pa G N Y I S differentiates between two levels of satya Sanskrit, meaning truth or really existing. In the discourse of the Buddha, the conventional or provisional samvirti truth, and the ultimate paramartha truth, the exact meaning varies between the various Buddhist schools and traditions. The best known interpretation is from the Madhyamaka school of Mahayana Buddhism, whose founder was Nagarjuna. For Nagarjuna, the two truths are epistemological truths. The phenomenal world is accorded a provisional existence. The character of the phenomenal world is declared to be neither real nor unreal, but logically indeterminable. Ultimately, phenomena are empty of an inherent self or essence, but exist depending on other phenomena .In Chinese Buddhism, the Madhyamaka position is accepted and the two truths refer to two ontological truths. Reality exists of two levels, a relative level and an absolute level. Based on their understanding of the Mahayana Mahapurnirvana Sutra, the Chinese supposed that the teaching of the Buddha nature was, as stated by that sutra, the final Buddhist teaching, and that there is an essential truth above sunyata and the two truths. The sunyata doctrine is an attempt to show that it is neither proper nor strictly justifiable to regard any metaphysical system as absolutely valid. It doesn't lead to nihilism but strikes a middle course between excessive naivete and excessive skepticism. Topic. Etymology and meaning Satya is usually taken to mean truth, but does also refer to mean a reality, a genuinely real existent. Satya satya is derived from sat and ya. Sat means being, reality, and is the present participle of the root as to be. Pi asterisk hs, cognate to English as ya and yam means advancing, supporting, hold up, sustain, one that moves." As a composite word, satya and satam imply that, "...which supports, sustains and advances reality, being." It literally means, "...that which is true, actual, real, genuine, trustworthy, valid." The Two Truths Doctrine states that there is Provisional or conventional truth Sanskrit Samvirti Satya, Pali Samuti Saka, Tibetan Kun Rdzob Bden Pa, which describes our daily experience of a concrete world, and Ultimate truth Sanskrit, Paramartha Satya, Pali Paramattha Saka, Tibetan, Don Dam Bden Pa, which describes the ultimate reality as sunyata, empty of concrete and inherent characteristics. Chandrakirti suggests three possible meanings of Samvirti. Complete covering or the screen of ignorance which hides truth Existence or origination through dependence, mutual conditioning Worldly behavior or speech behavior involving designation and designatum, cognition and cognitum. The conventional truth may be interpreted as obscurative truth or that which obscures the true nature. As a result, it is constituted by the appearances of mistaken awareness. Conventional truth would be the appearance that includes a duality of apprehender and apprehended, and objects perceived within that. Ultimate truths, are phenomena free from the duality of apprehender and apprehended. Background Buddha's teaching of Dharma may be viewed as a path of release from the anxieties of life. The first noble truth equates life experiences with pain and suffering. Buddha's language was simple and colloquial. Naturally, various statements of Buddha at times appear contradictory to each other. Later Buddhist teachers were faced with the problem of resolving these contradictions. Nagarjuna and other teachers introduced an exegetical technique level distinction between two levels of truth, the conventional and the ultimate. A similar method is reflected in the Brahmanical exegesis of the Vedic scriptuires, which combine the ritualistic injunctions of the Brahmana and speculative philosophical questions of the Upanishads as one whole revealed body of work, thereby contrasting the Jnana Kanda with Karmakanda. <laughs> Origin and development While the concept of the two truths is associated with the Madhyamaka school, its history goes back to the oldest Buddhism. Early Indian Buddhism Pali Canon 
In the Pali Canon, the distinction is not made between a lower truth and a higher truth, but rather between two kinds of expressions of the same truth, which must be interpreted differently. Thus a phrase or passage, or a whole sutta, might be classed as nayatha or samuti or vihara, but it is not regarded at this stage as expressing or conveying a different level of truth. Natattha Pali, Sanskrit, matartha, of plain or clear meaning, and nayatha Pali, Sanskrit, niartha, a word or sentence having a sense that can only be guessed. These terms were used to identify texts or statements that either did or did not require additional interpretation. A natattha text required no explanation, while a nayatha one might mislead some people unless properly explained. There are these two who misrepresent the tathagata. Which two? He who represents a sutta of indirect meaning as a sutta of direct meaning and he who represents a sutta of direct meaning as a sutta of indirect meaning. Samuti or samuti Pali, Sanskrit, samvirti, meaning, common consent, general opinion, convention and paramattha Pali, Sanskrit, paramartha, meaning ultimate, are used to distinguish conventional or common sense language, as used in metaphors or for the sake of convenience, from language used to express higher truths directly. The term vihara Pali, Sanskrit, vyavihara, common practice, convention, custom, is also used in more or less the same sense as samuti. Topic. Theravada The Theravadan commentators expanded on these categories and began applying them not only to expressions but to the truth then expressed. The Awakened One, the best of teachers, spoke of two truths, conventional and higher, no third is ascertained, a conventional statement is true because of convention and a higher statement is true as disclosing the true characteristics of events. Prinaptavada The Prajnaptavada school took up the distinction between the conventional and ultimate paramartha, samvirti, and extended the concept to metaphysical phenomenological constituents dharmas, distinguishing those that are real tattva from those that are purely conceptual, i.e., ultimately non-existent <laughs> Indian Mahayana Buddhism Madhyamaka <laughs> <laughs> The distinction between the two truths was fully developed by Nagarjuna c. 150 c. 250 CE of the Madhyamaka school. The Madhyamikas distinguish between loka samvriti satya, world speech truth, c. q. relative truth, c. q. truth that keeps the ultimate truth concealed. And Paramarthika Satya, ultimate truth, Loka Samvriti Satya can be further divided in Tathya Samvriti or Loka Samvriti, and Mithya Samvriti or Aloka Samvriti, true Samvriti, and false Samvriti, Tathya Samvriti or true Samvriti, refers to things which concretely exist and can be perceived as such by the senses, while Mithya Samvriti or false Samvriti refers to false cognitions of things. Which do not exist as they are perceived. Nagarjuna's Mulamadamakakarika provides a logical defense for the claim that all things are empty of an inherently existing self nature. Sunyata, however, is also shown to be empty, and Nagarjuna's assertion of the emptiness of emptiness prevents sunyata from constituting a higher or ultimate reality. Nagarjuna's view is that the ultimate truth is that there is no ultimate truth. According to Siddharitz, Nagarjuna is a semantic anti-dualist who posits that there are only conventional truths. J. L. Garfield explains, Suppose that we take a conventional entity, such as a table. We analyze it to demonstrate its emptiness, finding that there is no table apart from its parts. So we conclude that it is empty. But now let us analyze that emptiness. What do we find? Nothing at all but the table's lack of inherent existence. To see the table as empty is to see the table as conventional, as dependent. In Nagarjuna's Mulamadamakakarika the two truths doctrine is used to defend the identification of dependent origination with emptiness sunyata. The Buddha's teaching of the Dharma is based on two truths, a truth of worldly convention and an ultimate truth. Those who do not understand the distinction drawn between these two truths do not understand the Buddha's profound truth. 
Without a foundation in the conventional truth the significance of the ultimate cannot be taught. Without understanding the significance of the ultimate, liberation is not achieved. In Nagarjuna's own words, 8. The teaching by the Buddhas of the Dharma has recourse to two truths, the world-ensconced truth and the truth which is the highest sense. 9. Those who do not know the distribution of the two kinds of truth do not know the profound point tattva in the teaching of the Buddha. 10. The highest sense of the truth is not taught apart from practical behavior. And without having understood the highest sense one cannot understand nirvana. Nagarjuna based his statement of the two truths on the Kakayanagata Sutta. In the Kakayanagata Sutta, the Buddha, speaking to the monk Kakayanagata on the topic of right view, describes the middle way between nihilism and eternalism. By and large, Kakayana, this world is supported by a polarity, that of existence and non-existence. But when one sees the origination of the world as it actually is with right discernment, non-existence, with reference to the world does not occur to one. When one sees the cessation of the world as it actually is with right discernment, existence, with reference to the world does not occur to one. According to Chattopadhyaya, although Nagarjuna presents his understanding of the two truths as a clarification of the teachings of the Buddha, the two truths doctrine as such is not part of the earliest Buddhist tradition. Topic. Buddhist idealism Topic. Yogacara The Yogacara school of Buddhism distinguishes the three natures and the trikaya. The three natures are Paramarthika, transcendental reality, also referred to as Paranaspana in Yogacara literature, the level of a storehouse of consciousness that is responsible for the appearance of the world of external objects. It is the only ultimate reality. Paratantrika dependent or empirical reality, the level of the empirical world experienced in ordinary life. For example, the snake seen in the snake. Parakalpita imaginary. For example, the snake seen in a dream. Topic. Lankavatara Sutra The Lankavatara Sutra took an idealistic turn in apprehending reality. D. T. Suzuki writes the following The Lanka is quite explicit in assuming two forms of knowledge, the one for grasping the absolute or entering into the realm of mind only, and the other for understanding existence in its dual aspect in which logic prevails and the Vijnanas are active. The latter is designated discrimination in the Lanka and the former transcendental wisdom or knowledge prajna. To distinguish these two forms of knowledge is most essential in Buddhist philosophy. Topic. East Asian Buddhism When Buddhism came to China from Gandhara now Afghanistan and India in the 1st per 2nd century CE, it was initially adapted to the Chinese culture and understanding. Buddhism was exposed to Confucianist and Taoist influences. Neo-Taoist concepts were taken over in Chinese Buddhism. Concepts such as T. Yung, essence and function, and Li Shi. Noumenon and phenomenon were first taken over by Hua Yen Buddhism, which consequently influenced Chan deeply. The Two Truths doctrine was another point of confusion. Chinese thinking took this to refer to two ontological truths reality exists of two levels, a relative level and an absolute level. Taoists at first misunderstood sunyata to be akin to the Taoist non being. In Madhyamaka, the two truths are two epistemological truths, two different ways to look at reality. Based on their understanding of the Mahayana Mahapurnirvana Sutra the Chinese supposed that the teaching of the Buddha nature was, as stated by that sutra, the final Buddhist teaching, and that there is an essential truth above sunyata and the two truths. Hua <laughs> Yen Buddhism The Huayan school or flower garland is a tradition of Mahayana Buddhist philosophy that flourished in China during the Tang period. It is based on the Sanskrit Flower Garland Sutra S. Avatamsaka Sutra, C. Huayan Jing and on a lengthy Chinese interpretation of it, the Huayan Lun, the name Flower Garland is meant to suggest the crowning glory of profound understanding. The most important philosophical contributions of the Huayan school were in the area of its metaphysics. It taught the doctrine of the mutual containment and interpenetration of all phenomena, as expressed in Indra's net. One thing contains all other existing things, and all existing things contain that one thing. 
Distinctive features of this approach to Buddhist philosophy include truth or reality is understood as encompassing and interpenetrating falsehood or illusion, and vice versa. Good is understood as encompassing and interpenetrating evil. Similarly, all mind-made distinctions are understood as collapsing. In the enlightened understanding of emptiness, a tradition traced back to the Buddhist philosopher Nagarjuna, Wayan teaches the four dharmadhatu, four ways to view reality. All dharmas are seen as particular separate events. All events are an expression of the absolute. Events and essence interpenetrate. All events interpenetrate. Topic: Absolute and relative in Zen. The teachings of Zen are expressed by a set of polarities, Buddha nature, sunyata, absolute relative, sudden and gradual enlightenment. The Prashnaparamita Sutras and Madhyamaka emphasize the non-duality of form and emptiness. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form, as the Heart Sutra says. The idea that the ultimate reality is present in the daily world of relative reality fitted into the Chinese culture which emphasized the mundane world and society. But this does not tell how the Absolute is present in the relative world. This question is answered in such schemata as the five ranks of Tozen and the Oxerding pictures. Topic. Essence function in Korean Buddhism The polarity of Absolute and Relative is also expressed as essence function. The Absolute is essence, the Relative is function. They can't be seen as separate realities, but interpenetrate each other. The distinction does not exclude any other frameworks such as Neng So or subject object constructions, though the two are completely different from each other in terms of their way of thinking. In Korean Buddhism, essence function is also expressed as body and the body's functions. A more accurate definition and the one the Korean populace is more familiar with is body and the body's functions. The implications of essence, function, and body, its functions, are similar, that is, both paradigms are used to point to a nondual relationship between the two concepts. A metaphor for essence function is a lamp and its light, a phrase from the Platform Sutra, where essence is lamp and function is light. Topic. Tibetan Buddhism Topic. Nyingma The Nyingma tradition is the oldest of the four major schools of Tibetan Buddhism. It is founded on the first translations of Buddhist scriptures from Sanskrit into Tibetan, in the 8th century. Ju Mipham in his commentary to the Madhyamalamkara of Santaraksita says, If one trains for a long time in the union of the two truths, the stage of acceptance on the path of joining, which is attuned to primordial wisdom, will arise. By thus acquiring a certain conviction in that which surpasses intellectual knowledge, and by training in it, one will eventually actualize it. This is precisely how the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas have said that liberation is to be gained. The following sentence from Mipham's exegesis of Santaraksita's Madhyamalamkara highlights the relationship between the absence of the four extremes MTHA BZHI and the nondual or indivisible two truths BDEN pa med. The learned and accomplished masters of the early translations considered this simplicity beyond the four extremes, this abiding way in which the two truths are indivisible, as their own immaculate way. Zogchen Zogchen holds that the two truths are ultimately resolved into non-duality as a lived experience and are non-different. Understanding in other traditions Topic. Jainism The Jain philosopher Kundakunda Kunda was influenced by Nagarjuna to develop a Jain version of the theory of two truths. In texts such as Pravakanasara, the essence of the doctrine and Samayasara the essence of the soul, Kundakunda Kunda distinguishes between two perspectives of truth, Vyavaharanaya or mundane perspective, 
Niskanaya or ultimate perspective, also called supreme Paramartha and pure Sutta for Kundakunda, Kunda, the mundane realm of truth is also the relative perspective of normal folk, where the workings of karma operate and where things emerge, last for a certain duration and perish. The ultimate perspective meanwhile, is that of the liberated jiva, which is blissful, energetic, perceptive, and omniscient. Topic. Advaita Vedanta Advaita took over from the Madhyamika the idea of levels of reality. Usually two levels are being mentioned, but Shankara uses sublation as the criterion to postulate an ontological hierarchy of three levels. Paramarthika Paramartha, absolute, the absolute level, which is absolutely real and into which both other reality levels can be resolved. This experience can't be sublated by any other experience. Vyavaharika Vyavahara, or Samvriti Saya empirical or pragmatical. Our world of experience, the phenomenal world that we handle every day when we are awake. It is the level in which both jiva living creatures or individual souls and Iswara are true, here, the material world is also true. Pratibhasika Pratibhasika, apparent reality, unreality. Reality based on imagination alone. It is the level in which appearances are actually false, like the illusion of a snake over a rope, or a dream. Topic. Mimamsa refutation of two truths doctrine Chattopadhyaya notes that the 8th century Mimamsa philosopher Kumarila Bhatta rejected the two truths doctrine in his Slakavartika. Bhatta was highly influential with his defense of the Vedic rituals against medieval Buddhist rejections of these rituals. Some believe that his influence contributed to the decline of Buddhism in India since his lifetime coincides with the period in which Buddhism began to decline. According to Kumarila, the Two Truths doctrine is an idealist doctrine, which conceals the fact that the theory of the nothingness of the objective world is absurd. O oh, nay should admit that what does not exist, exists not, and what does exist, exists in the full sense. The latter alone is true, and the former false. But the idealist just cannot afford to do this. He is obliged instead to talk of two truths, senseless though this be. Topic. Correspondence with Pyrrhonism McEvely 2002 notes a correspondence between Greek Pyrrhonism and Madhyamika doctrines. Sextus says that there are two criteria t hat by which we judge reality and unreality, and t hat which we use as a guide in everyday life. According to the first criterion, nothing is either true or false, i. inductive statements based on direct observation of phenomena may be treated as either true or false for the purpose of making everyday practical decisions. The distinction, as Kahn's has noted, is equivalent to the Madhyamika distinction between absolute truth, paramathasatya, the knowledge of the real as it is without any distortion, and truth so-called, samvirti satya, truth as conventionally believed in common parlance. Topic. See also. Nagarjuna. Simran. Tetralemma Upaya Topic Notes Topic References Topic Sources Topic Published Sources Topic Web Sources Topic. External links Works related to Samyukta Agama 301, Katyayana Gatra Sutra at Wikisource Barbara O'Brien, The Two Truths. What is Reality?